G'day shooters. The main attractions of the Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon 1 are that it's extremely well made, long lasting, light and easy to handle. Beretta doesn't tend to do things by halves, so even this, their entry level shotgun, is a pretty high spec gun. Now entry level for Beretta means a price tag of about $2,859 or more in 2021, depending on the specs that you take. And that's not cheap as such, unless you're right into your shotguns and consider 10 grand to be a reasonable proposition. But look at it this way, from just under three grand for this, the next step up the Italian maker's ladder takes you to over four grand. In that context, the Silver Pigeon is very, very good value because you're getting the same quality, engineering and technology that forms a platform for higher spec Berettas. I wouldn't be the first to say that the Silver Pigeon represents Beretta's best value. After this, the law of diminishing returns comes into play. So what do you get? Before we answer that, let's look at what we've got, because there's a number of variations on the Silver Pigeon 1 theme. This is the sporting model, ostensibly for use at the range first and hunting second, but an all-rounder, while the field model is all about hunting. The differences are numerous, but they're all in the details. The sporting model has ejectors, handy for quick reloading, but painful if you don't want to leave your rubbish strewn all over the bush. The sporting model also has a manual safety as opposed to the field model's automatically engaged safety. In both, the switch for the barrel select is incorporated into the safety so you can pick which barrel fires first. It has a wider forend than the field model, and in this case the gun has a schnabel tip. But you can choose a flush fitting one, of course, if you prefer it, which a lot of people do. We've got 30 inch barrels on this, while 32 inch barrels are also an option, and in the field you can also get 28 inches. The ribs here are vented. An adjustable comb is available for the sporting at extra cost, and it'd probably be a nice thing to have too. Now back to the basics. As of the 686's updates a couple of years ago, you get a very light, strong set of barrels. In this 30 inch gun, the bare barrels, including chokes, weigh just 1,426 grams. Beretta uses a tri-alloy steel in its barrels, which are drilled, cold hammer forged and vacuum relieved. They call it steelium and they claim superior ballistic performance, though whether that's true or not is impossible to quantify. What it does seem to do is ensure Beretta's barrels are light, probably the lightest in their class, while still being more than strong enough to pass proofing tests. These light barrels create a gun that's very easy to swing. And this goes well with the Beretta's slim and sexy profile. It's compact, especially with the low profile action that Beretta created by putting the locking mechanism between the two barrels rather than on top like in the traditional fashion. And beside the 686, most guns look and feel chunky. Does this make the Beretta better? No, not on its own. Not unless that means it fits you better. And the real judge of a shotgun, of course, is how well it fits you. Now with about 32 mils drop at the comb and 50 mil at the heel, Many people complain that their eye sits relatively low behind the sighting rib, despite the low profile action. I'm a bit taller though, and I'd prefer it with just a little lower stock again. Horses for courses, eh? For people without the stretch dimensions of my bonds, the adjustable comb would make all the difference in the world. For people like me, the Silver Pigeon is a better fit than you'll find on most guns. That low stock is one thing that differentiates the Silver Pigeon from many of its competitors. Some people also find they point better with heavier barrels too. And that's another point of difference to keep in mind with this gun. Either way, the 686 has really, really nice balance. Literally, the point of balance is right under the hinge pin. Tangibly, this gun just seems to go with you in a very natural way when you swing. Despite being a little lighter than most guns, it doesn't kick, it doesn't punish you for a long day on the clays like some might. The recoil pad is wonderfully pliant, and the way it fits me, I don't feel too much recoil. I wouldn't say it was brilliant, but it's quite acceptable. It's just over three and a half kilos all up. It's not a super light gun. So I'd say fit plays more of a role than weight in the effect of reducing recoil. And of course, everything worked beautifully, which is exactly how it should be with a Beretta. Almost 500 years of gun making history has to count for something. The conical locking lugs are one of the ways in which Beretta ensures that there's a long life for the Silver Pigeon. If you do wear it out, they're replaceable as are the pivot points for the barrels. Somewhere in its literature, Beretta talks coyly about the Silver Pigeon shooting more than 10,000 rounds without any sign of wear, but I reckon it's probably safe to say you'll get a hell of a lot more than that. For all that, we're still talking an entry-level gun. 
Metal to metal fit and timber to metal fit are both very good, but they're not outstanding. Sure, the lockup is tight and all that, it's just the aesthetic details are better on its more expensive guns. The engraving's nice, it's laser cut, not hand etched. The walnut's nice, but it's not the really good stuff. The question is, you're the sort of person who's going to pay twice as much for a better finish. Inevitably, we come back to the fact that the 686 Silver Pigeon 1 is excellent value. It works precisely the way it should, it feels light and obedient, and it's going to last a very, very long time. It's good looking too. You can buy it as your only gun, and you can depend on it. Or if you decide you're going to trade it, you can count on it retaining a fair bit of its value, making replacement more affordable. I tell you what though, it would take a lot to tempt me away from one of these. I'll have to do that again, I lost my balance. <laughs>